Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Friday. Hope you like the Ivory Coast episode. I still can't believe that fact about Michael Jackson. It literally happened. And it also happened again in 2013 as his son was inaugurated as a prince via Skype. See, I love Africa. Only stuff like that can happen. And it's not even shocking. Anyway, today we covered the Ivorian flag and the coat of arms. So without further ado... <laughs> So before we get into this, one thing I really wanted to talk about but I didn't have time in the Ivory Coast episode was the legend of Queen Poku. She was queen of the Baule people, which make up one of the largest tribes in the Ivory Coast. According to legend, a long time ago, her and her people were fleeing from the Ashanti people in Ghana. As they approached the Kamoe River, they were told that in order to cross, you must sacrifice your most prized possession. For Queen Poku, that was her son. So, according to legend again, she had to throw her son into the river, and when that happened, hippos rose up and they were allowed to cross the river. After the crossing, all she could say was Baule which means the child is dead and that's how the tribe gets their name yeah that and I also wanted to talk about how Abidjan has like disputably the most developed skyline in all of West Africa anyway the flag the flag of the Ivory Coast is a vertical tricolor of orange white and green yes it is the exact mirror image of the Ireland flag adopted in 1959 the flag was modeled after the French tricolor and later inspired the flag of Niger the orange stands for the savannas found in the north of the country the white stands for peace and the green stands for the forests of the south and hope except for the time that they're under the French Empire this this is the first and only flag that they have ever had. Also, it might be important to note that this is one of the only few flags in the region that does not utilize the Pan-Africanist movement colors of red, black, and green, or red, gold, and green. Some say it might have to do with the fact that they didn't want to follow in the lead of Ghana, who kind of started it all, even though they were inspired off of Ethiopia. But that's just kind of a joke. Maybe. Anyway, moving on, the coat of arms. The image contains a green shield with the head of their national animal, the African elephant, which was symbolically important for the ivory trade that they used to be a part of, hence where they got their name. Behind the shield lies a rising sun symbolizing the new beginning. On the sides, two golden palm trees and a golden banner below with the phrase République de Côte d'Ivoire, which I'm sure you need no translation for. Now, unlike the flag, they have had historical variants of their coat of arms. The first one depicted many flags on it with a blue shield and bubbly trees. The second one, an elephant that wasn't gold. And the final one with the elephant that became gold. Done! Hey, I'm just saying, like, the sale of ivory is mostly illegal now, and they are, like, the number one cocoa producer in the world. I personally like the name Coco Coco. Post, but uh, yeah, I'm not the guy in charge. Anyway, with all that being said and done, you know what time it is? Geography fan mail time. Okay, so kind of like last time, I filmed myself opening up all the packages, but I accidentally deleted all the footage. However, I still have all of your letters and stuff, so I'm just gonna kind of do this in reverse. Okay, first of all, I don't know who sent this, but somebody sent me a package with this shirt. Asia, but it's Africa. I love it, I love it, it's hilarious. Thank you, whoever you are. Michael K from Austria sent a beer coaster postcard. He saw that another person did it. He's like, hey, why don't I do it too? Uh, I think your name is Akash. He sent a ton of these Indian snacks. And this thing, it's a uh, Avurvedic oil. I've never even heard of it. Oh, it's stress relieving hair oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Uh, Samantha is in the Navy and she was deployed all over the Middle East. First of all, thank you for your services, Samantha. And she sends these really cool Kuwaiti banknotes. Now, here's the deal. I promised my Bahraini friends that after I pass a million subscribers, if I do, uh, I would go back to Bahrain. How However, if I go back, I want to check out some of the other Gulf countries I haven't seen, like Kuwait, Oman, and Yemen. Yemen would probably be very difficult, but if I could, I would love to. Thanks a lot, Samantha. Uh, Dan from New Jersey, he sends this Bangladeshi banknote, and he says his brother is teaching English at the American University of Central Asia in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. Here are some Kyrgyz words. Hello, Salamatsingbi. What is your name? Sidin Atingis Kim. Man, these Turkic languages are just so complex, I just, I don't see myself understanding them anytime soon. Okay, this is really cool. G. Hilesania, I think that's your name. He wrote a really cool letter, but he also wrote in the traditional Bayabayan alphabet script. Uh, I believe it's actually an abugida or like a syllable re. They used to write in this script a long time ago in the Philippines and before they adopted Latin. That's so cool. I love it when people try to like revive cultural traits of their ancestors. It's just sometimes it's so cool when people do that. All right, Ryan from the UK says his dad is Jamaican and his mom is Irish uh, and he's excited for the countries coming up. Uh, I got this nice Nice letter from Batrinu Vlad Florian, I think that's your name. Uh, he sent me some stamps from Romania. I can't find them, but I did get them. I did get them, so thank you. Now we got another Romanian, Stefan. This is really cool. It's a reproduction of the old inscription found in Tartaria. Said to be over 7,000 years old, and some claim it is the first example of human writing. No one knows what the symbols mean or who wrote them. And he also sent some badges with the country's emblems, both the communist and the present coat of arms. Stefan, man, I think you put Romania on the map. This is really cool. Thanks a lot. Uh, Christopher from Houston, uh, he's very proud of 
of his Norwegian heritage. You did send me a cool little map thing of like the Sami people. Um, I, I can't find it. I put it somewhere, but I did get it. Thank you so much. Uh, somebody from New Zealand, you didn't write your name on your letter, but you said you're a Kiwi of Indian descent and you sent me a ton of Kiwi snacks. LP lemony fizzy drink. I remember I had this when I was in New Zealand. He also sent peanut slab and pineapple lumps. But the most important thing, he sent me Marmite! Oh, I love this stuff. Oh, thank you so much, man. I, oh, I ran out of it like a long time ago, and now I have some more. Uh, I got this letter from Thailand. Hi, Paul, or Sawasti Kup. My name is Paul Charadanai. But don't worry, you can call me Jack. <laughs> I started watching since the Gambia episode, and I love the Haiti video. Thank you. And of course, Jack put a little Thai flag at the back of his letter. Uh, Hector, I got your letter. Uh, you sent me some postcards from the Netherlands, but I can't find them. Maybe I'll find them later, but uh, thank you for your postcards. I did get them. And finally, guys, I am so disappointed that I lost the footage of me opening this package because it was so amazing and epic. It's from Paul Joseph, who is from New Jersey. He says, as you know, when a channel reaches 100,000 subscribers, they are eligible for the silver play button. Yep, I got mine. When they reach a million subscribers, they may receive a gold play button. Don't got one yet. But anyway, please accept the Geography Now play button. So I opened the package. And this is what he sent. He actually made a play button award. <laughs> Congratulations, Geography Now. You have reached 650,000 subscribers. That is so creative and unique. I've never, I didn't, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get the gold play button, but uh, this one definitely makes me feel great too. Paul Joseph, this is literally like the coolest thing ever. Thank you so much for sending it. You rock. All right, that was fun. But before we go, you know what time it is? It's return address contest. I put all of your return addresses in this bag and then I pick one out and whoever wins, I get to send a little gift to. Cool, so here we go. Just gonna pick one, just gonna pick one. Uh, who is this? Jordan from Miles City, Montana. You just won. So thank you guys for sending everything that you sent. I love putting your countries and your hometowns on display. Subscribe to this channel if you want. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one. Stay cool, stay tuned.